going to make a mausoleum. And I downloaded the blueprints on the Hallmark channel. There is actually a YouTube video on how to build this thing on Hallmark. Um, but because I like to try to do things a little bit cheaper and they did the video in three minutes and they're like, oh, it's this easy, it's that easy. I already am like having problems. You have to buy this giant piece of foam. You have to figure out how to get it home without it flying out of your car. Um, you gotta get the wood. I had problems with the hinges. This is a removable pins and um, these pins are not easy to get out. So I gotta work with that. I mean, so, so far I'm not looking forward to this project, but I am because I'm excited how it's gonna turn out. Um, they, where I live, we didn't have the um, Owings corn, Owings, whatever it is, the Pink Panther foam, the high density foam. We have this stuff, which is a little bit more, um, it's more like styrofoam. So I'm gonna have to use a jigsaw and the right blade and make sure that it doesn't just fall apart. Um, still, this isn't the cheapest project I ever made. These pieces of foam each were $16.99, so that adds up to almost 80 bucks of tax. The hinges all together were $10. You gotta get screws, you have to get Gorilla Glue. These things weren't too bad, they're $1.99. Um, so after um, everything, I think this is a $100, um, what do you call this thing? A $100 prop, a $100 mausoleum, which I think is a good deal though because I just went to a Halloween prop store and I saw the same props there for rent, $300 a night. $300 a night for a mausoleum made out of foam. Or you could buy the whole thing for about, you know, $1,500 to $3,000. So a $100 prop that I can make at home is um, pretty much a good deal, but I usually don't spend more than like $40 on anything. So it was hard for me to beg my husband to buy me the foam and drive it and help me load it in my truck because have a little truck. Anyways, um, I'm gonna have my son help me build this and I can't wait to get started to see um, exactly how easy this is going to be. If you um, know Ojai in October, it's not fall. It's 92 degrees right now, and I actually wanted to do this in the morning, and it didn't work out. So here I am in the full sun, sweating. I had to put my hair up in a bun to make this um, mausoleum. This is going to be a little different than the one on the Hallmark Channel. I am making mine um, a mausoleum with a projection inside. So I'm not gonna have it a walkthrough. I'm actually gonna have three walls with a hole cut in so the projection can go through onto cloth on the inside to look like a ghost is in the inside. So after we cut out these walls, I'm making the door, the front of it. So you just go on Pinterest, go on YouTube, go anywhere, I don't know, the internet, and find some mausoleums and some doors you wanna do. Measure it out, trace out the door you want, and then use the jigsaw that we use to cut these out to cut out your door. Save the one you cut out and make a tombstone out of it later. It is very hot out here and this is so white and it's ridiculous. The other side is silver. If I was doing that, I'd die. And here is our door. Voila! I can walk through it. Short people can walk through it. So the shade is slowly creeping its way over here. So I'm ripping off this because I'm not going to need it. Okay, now that I have a little bit more shade and I've moved it in a little bit, I can show you what the next step is. So this is where you take those cheap pieces of wood, and I've already had a problem with that. They're so cheap they're either warped or bent. So you take the wood, and this one, this is the one with our door over here. I'm gonna put the wood all the way on the edge, like this, all the way to the edge. Now this over here is gonna be our wall on the side, and it will go like that. So you can either take your marker, this is a bad corner, and draw a line right about where that is, or you can measure. 
whatever the distance is here. See that? I don't know if, you can, if I can zoom in on that or not. It's going to be the exact same distance here. So when we take this piece of foam and we have it up like this, this piece of wood is going to be glued onto there and you're going to see me glue these on with Gorilla Glue. After that's all glued on, glued on with Gorilla Glue and screwed on, screwed and screwed, then the hinges go on with the removable pins for easy storage. And the pins aren't that removable, but we'll see how that works. So I pretty much finished the um, framing of each board and the one with the door over there. This one in the middle is going to be the back wall that I'm going to cut a hole in at the end when I'm all done with the jigsaw. These over here are the leftover pieces that they do not talk about in the other video, how to make the top. So that's the part I'm going to do right now. So here is the instructions and you can see how these are the pieces that sorry that we kept over here and that is what I need to build so that is my um, next assignment right now I have one more hour to do this I think I would have been done with this if I started early in the morning but instead I started about two o'clock and it's four o'clock right now and um, I don't want to do it much later because I'm a mom and I need to make dinner so this will probably sit and it will um, dry overnight, which is good for the Gorilla Glue. It needs time to dry. I wouldn't want to mess with it right now with the Gorilla Glue wet. Okay, so this wasn't making any sense to me because it said this one was 48 inches and this is 57 inches. And I thought we would use all four of these. Now it makes sense. This is something they should have told me before I cut it. These are 48 inches. Exactly. So where am I going to get my 57 inches? Ah, the door I cut out. The one I was going to make a really cool tombstone. So if I knew that this would have been 57 inches, I would have cut the door 57 inches. But you know what? It does say 10 inches on either side. Or was it 10? Yeah, it says 10 inches. Well, I did do it two inches, but it didn't tell me how tall it should have been. If I'm supposed to use 57 inches, oh, the door. Crap. So this is my door. From the tip of my door all the way down is 64 inches. 57 inches right about there. So I have to cut my door. And I can't use it as a really cool big tombstone, but that means I got two of these for tombstones. That's something that would have been nice to know. up to a surprisingly nice and cool morning after yesterday's hot sun and uh, it's a little too wet but um, I'm gonna start working on this now before the Sun comes out and it's 100 degrees again but it's so foggy and nice and I just want to get this project done um, it looks like it kind of bent with the wood which is not good but uh, we'll see what happens So after um, my husband gets here, we're going to put all four corners together and put the hinges on the wood. But um, definitely wood stayed on. It's a little wet from last night, so I'm going to still let it dry. So here's the plans for the top part. 
um, I already cut out 48 inches and 57 inches. These were from my door that I cut out, and this was left over from the top. And then um, I have some leftover foam, so I'm gonna cut out these triangles right now so I can glue in each corner. So what I realized is each corner is gonna go in there, but where does it go? Does it go in the middle? Does it go in the top? Does it go in the bottom? I, I don't know. So I'm just gonna make up something because I have a feeling when you put it on the top, these might rest on it or is it just holding it together? So um, this is another thing where I'm just trying to see if it works. Okay, wait a minute here. Okay, if this is 48 inches long and this is 57 inches long, right? Okay, you guys see that? Wouldn't this be a rectangle? You want to be a complete square? So like, like ugh, whatever. I'm gonna. Okay, I'm gonna tell you right now. This is just pissing me off. The glue's not sticking. The I'm making a mess. Um. So pretty much, I put a corner here, and then I glued it, and I glued that side, and then you lift this side up, and you sandwich it together and then I mean even the screws don't even hold because there's no wood there so I obviously need wood to hold this together because this isn't working and that's something that's not on the instructions and that's something that doesn't tell you what <laughs> just fuck. sorry I'm gonna get glue on my freaking patio thanks a lot so I'm still trying to figure it out I'm sorry for the cussing So while my uh, corner is over there drying, in the meantime, I wanted to show you this. I got this cheap little thing at a um, Halloween store and some cheap little pl plastic skulls. I'm going to cut a piece of foam and glue it with the Gorilla Glue into here. So that way when I'm done, I can secure and glue this onto the top of my um, entrance to the ma mausoleum. And then the skulls I'm gonna put on each corner. Because they're hollow, I'm just going to stab some sticks in the top of my foam and just boop, place them on there. I'm not going to glue them on or anything because when we take it all apart, I have to take these off. Um, this part, unfortunately, will be stuck on the door, but um, once we um, undo it, it should stack away nice and neat, I hope. All right, so I'm going to do that now. All right, so you need to get the um, removable pin hinges and remove the pin here and it's not easy um, to get the pin in and out of this thing but um, you have to get it aligned pretty well to get it back in there and then get it out if you want to shave it down to make it easier you can so they come like this you use something like this nail whatever you have around the house and you're gonna have to hammer the pin out. And then I am gonna loosely put it back in there and leave it like that. Because I'm not sure with the foam how hard it is gonna remove this or not. So now we're going to pre-drill in our wood for the screws. It's a mini door for a mini person. Yeah, it's not that small. It's for kids. It's a it's a child it's a child mausoleum. Oh well, that's friggin' morbid. That's what makes it scary. That's creepy. This little top view. Yeah, that the top I said view that looks like a perfect square shouldn't, shouldn't look like a perfect square. Which I said that before because I was confused. Because it doesn't make sense, right? Yes. So, so since we have four foot pieces, that's 48 inches, 
and we have mm -hmm. to go over that. Mm -hmm. All right, so if we did it the way that we're originally set up for, now, because this four foot piece it's is on the, on the outside of this, we'd have to subtract three inches. That's 45 inches, and I won't go over the 48 inch. So the short pieces need to be on the inside. Correct. And the long, long pieces, pieces on the outside. That's it. Okay. So, so we got to rip off my triangles. We'll not rip. We'll carefully extricate the triangles from the. That's why I gave myself extra room. Oh, that's not careful. Don't you, you don't don't don't. Oh. Oh, quick. All right, bring out the grill review. That. That one I fucked up. Just like anything, it takes three times as long. Well, you gotta wait for this much. glue to dry. I know. I know. Just grill it. So in the beginning of my video, if I do my makeup, I brush my hair. At the end, I'm over it. And by the end, they know you by now. <laughs> I just wear whatever. Hang out with my chickens. Okay. I think it's good. Okay. Stay. Okay, we're gonna lift it up. There it is. There's the box. A little extra cardboard. <laughs> That's okay. All right, we'll go take it over to put it on. And now I gotta move the camera. You got it? Sure. Hey, be careful of my coffee. So I'm trying to film for you, and of course, everyone starts to do yard work at the same time. Mowing, hedge trimming, leaf blowing. I, so it's all gonna be time lapse. Okay, before the lawnmower start again, I want to uh, talk about this. So after you etch all your lines in your mausoleum, I was gonna use the razor blade, or the X-Acto knife, or whatever you have, to cut the lines out like they do in the Hallmark video. But this is different foam and it's messy. So if you have a hot glue gun or a soldering iron, it worked amazing. And I will show you what I mean. So with the razor blade, you have to cut in an angle. You cut in at an angle. And this styrofoam, as you can see, is different than the other video. And then you have to rip out all that. And there you have your your grout line. Now the raking starts. Or you take your hot glue gun on the highest setting or a um, soldering iron and you just slowly melt it away. See if I can get even closer. Watch how I just melt this 
much easier, much cleaner. You don't have all these jagged edges. Voice why? Uh, why would you ever have to? They should be able to hear you just fine over the leaf blower next door. Leaf blower's uh, banned in Ohio. Oh yeah, that's right. Yes! No, that one's good so I etched out a design on the top, and I'm cutting it out, and then I'm going to put it back on the top of the mausoleum. Put it on ice. Okay, okay, let's put it on ice. Okay. Ah. Ah. <laughs> so what we did is we cut out a whole bunch of these fake bricks with the leftover foam we had. And what we're going to do is put Gorilla Glue on here, put it on here, stab, leaf blower, stab it in with a skewer. So get a pack of skewers. And then you're just going to have to let it dry. When it's dry, you come in with some scissors and cut off the ends of the skewers. And they'll be ready to paint over. So that is what I'm going to do right now. It's going to take a long time. So I'm just going to do a time lapse. Enjoy! So we took the top off so I can finish my grout lines on the top here. Um, the next step is to get your, get your heat gun and you're going to add some textures on your brick by just going over the whole thing because right now it's really smooth looking and um, you want to have it some texture. What I did was I just filled in all the uh, hard to reach tiny little cracks with the black because I'm not going to be able to get in there with the uh, paintbrush and the roller. So. And then after I roll on the paint and all the grout lines, I'm going to go in with this and I'm going to add a little bit of shadowing just to make it pop and it's going to be done and it's going to be awesome. Oh, I gotta cut the window in the back for the projector and then hang the screen up in the inside. show you something real quick something that my husband did um, he went ahead and put some little um, eye hooks there for me so that way you can use some tent stakes and stake it into the ground 
Um, even though I think that it is very sturdy and with the four corners and four walls, I don't think it will blow away anywhere. Um, as you can tell, I ran out of paint, <laughs> but you can't tell in the front. Um, I thought that was a nice little touch is adding those um, little hooks. No, I guess we only did it in the corners. There you go. So you add a little peace and security to your mind so your mausoleum doesn't fly away in the wind. Um, nope. There it is. So I'm pretty much finished. I got just a few more little things I'm going to do with the airbrush to give it some shadowing and some details. Um, but other than that, it's going to dry and I'm going to move it into my graveyard. And I will definitely take a picture of it all lit up at night. So for the projection that I'm putting on the inside, I don't want it stapled on the wall like most of them you see. I actually want it inside just a little bit. And so I'm going to use um, the PVC pipes. I'm going to put my fabric on my PVC pipes, hang it from the top and have it all the way to the bottom. Put a PVC top, I mean put a PVC pipe on the bottom with the fabric in it. That way it doesn't blow in the wind. That is the worst thing if you ever do a projection having it blow in the wind. So then it will be on the bottom and on the top. like this with the fabric I'm going to use. I'm just going to go to Joanne's Fabric and find some nylon. Um, the same stuff that you can get other places for a little cheaper. And then um, I'm going to cut a hole in the back or a window. Maybe make it look a little like the door. But um, that's where the projection is going to go through is I'm going to have it set on the back side. And then if I don't want to do a projection, I just have a real cool crypt that, um, or a mausoleum that even an actor can hide in and come out and grab you and scare you. So I'm excited to see what this looks at, like at my house for Halloween, but I'm hopefully hoping I could use it at the Haunted Hayrides. Um, so you'll have to look out for it and let me know what you think.